So I have a couple of questions okay. for you. But do you remember how we met? Our mutual friend Barry, for sure. Yes, yes. Barry Battles, by the way. Yes, can, Barry can we Battles. Say that? Barry Battles. We can say Barry Battles. Bay, Baytown Barry. Outlaws director. Listen, Barry, Barry Battles yeah. has a special thanks Writer. credit in every episode okay. of this show. Yeah because he's actually the first person that encouraged me to do a talk show. And at the time, I wasn't interested yeah. in it. And honestly, yeah. uh, a lot of the guests that are on, uh, I was introduced to through Barry. So there you go. Here's one of them. So that's it. Um, but let me help you out with that scenario. So this was back in the W days, all right? And I hung out with Barry all the time, you know, when he wasn't working. I heard about Steve-O <laughs> so much. You know, there was Steve-O and Steve Brown. Right. And Lynn. Also, Steve Brown is an amazing fight coordinator now you yeah. know, for, for James Cameron. And but yeah, I, so I'd heard so much about you, never met you. And then uh, one night, I'm hanging out with Barry over there, and you walk, and I'm yeah. like, this is the guy. And it was like that instant thing where I'm like, well, God, this is why they're always talking about him. He's <laughs> such a likable guy. You were instantly hilarious, charming, and complimentary, Aww, you know, which flattery you. gets you everywhere. So. <laughs> no, thank but you. well, but, you are a handsome dude. So. Well, I I probably, you. I probably gave you some some crap when I first saw you. I probably came in and was like, "Who is this handsome dude? Why is oh, this guy here?" Stop, stop. Uh, yeah. The last time we were actually out in the social scene together, yeah. um, uh, there were some ladies in the bar that found you to be a handsome dude, and you didn't tell me. I'm still single. Look, there's no ring. <laughs> there's no ring. All right, ladies. Uh, the what's the Instagram handle? Uh, Slide into the DMs. Yeah, yeah. Stephen O. Young. It's my name. <laughs> I'm also on Hinge. So as far as spilling the tea goes, getting a little deeper into it, um, you've worked on a lot of stuff. I don't know if it's just the prevalence in pop culture or whatever, but you do have a lot of geek culture stuff on your resume. I know. Like you've I, done so much. I, I, mean, I am very blessed to be in a lot of, because I wanted to be a comic book artist when I was growing up. You know, I obviously decided, oh, I, I fell in love with martial arts. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm just going to be the next Bruce Lee. You know, that's going to be my thing. I was like, in my head, I was like, I can always draw, but I can't always have this beautiful face. So let me try yes, to do that. <laughs> let me try to do this for <laughs> while I can well, and see yeah. how that works. But yeah, like, so. The, the work that I have done in my career has lined up pretty well, like, with my interests, you know, doing Star Wars stuff. Heck yeah. Doing, yeah, doing the superhero stuff. Spider-Man, obviously. Gotham Knights, you know. Yeah. Batman, I love Batman. So, yeah, sometimes I have to pinch myself. And then now, thankfully, I do a lot of VO for video games. Yeah. Things like that. And so it's, it's really um, very simpatico with what I like. And I, I, I don't know if I can take any credit. Man, and sometimes that's just, I oh, don't know. Oh, uh, no. That's just. You got to take partial credit, right? Yeah. I mean, because you're doing the work. You're the one who put all that prep into that uh, Mr. Negative audition. And speaking of Mr. Negative, are you okay talking about the audition oh. process a little bit? I, oh, if yeah. I remember correctly, it was a pretty cool story. Dude, there. I love, well, people who have seen me, they, this is like <laughs> old hat. This is like my favorite story to tell. But I loved, I loved, I loved talking about that audition. Um, Let's talk about it. Yeah, so what? This is like 2016, something like that. Okay. Uh, a little journey back. I, yeah, I was really trying hard to transition out of stunt work because I had done stunts for like a decade. And all that time of doing stunts, I'd, I was still wanting to be an actor. Yeah. Around 2016, though, is really when I was like, 2015, 2016, I was like, okay, no, no, I have to like, I have to tell everybody I am just acting, you know? I had to say no to a lot of jobs, right? So I was in a position that was yeah. very uncomfortable. And uh, my manager got this audition for this video game. It was my first, like, acting video game audition. I had done mo motion capture, but I had never done, like, the face or the right. character, right? Or facial, the voice. The yeah. Facial performance. Facial capture, weird. yeah. So not to throw you off track. But throw me off track. Well, no, touching on that, so you said... You knew it was a video game, but they yeah. didn't say what exactly or right. even what the role is? They did not say what. And you signed an NDA? And I signed an NDA. Yeah, and then, uh, which I, later I was the one that leaked it, so. <laughs> but not on my, it was not my fault. Like, the, these data miners found this thing. But, like, so wow. I, get this, I get this audition from my manager, yeah. and uh, it's a cool scene, and they don't tell you what the game is for. It's uh, this rooftop like, it's after a bank heist. It's a, it's a scene, you know, it's a dummy scene that they made just to see your range. And I had to speak Chinese in it. I also had to speak English. I had to speak with an accent. So I'm, I'm going in and out of 
two languages with an accent and playing a bad guy. And they had said something that was really cool. They're like, it's a hostage situation. Yeah. And, you know, we have these hostages and I'm on the phone with the cops and I'm like telling them they better back off. And then at the end, like I kill a guy and then a helicopter comes and I get on. It's super dope, right? Right. And like, I, yeah. And Good it was such a, it. yeah. And it was such a cool scene. And they said, this character is supposed to be like uh, Jun Tao from Rush Hour. Rush Hour 1, which okay. is played by Ken Lung. He's a bad guy in Rush Hour, and, okay. you know, he has this cool line where he's like, he throws a napkin at a guy, he's like, wipe your face, you're bleeding, right? It's, like, super cool. So I was like, yeah. oh, got it. So at this time, I was, like, like I said, I was transitioning into acting. Yeah. It was a very uncomfortable position for me. I was saying no to work. I really wanted this job. I really needed this job. And I think I just bombed, uh, like, a one-line audition, like, a month before that. Those are the hardest TV show. Yeah. Well, I had bombed this thing, so I was just like, no, I'm going to get this damn role. I love that <laughs> right. Determination. Yeah, well, and then they also, it. right, and they also said the character was obviously a martial artist, uh-huh. and it was Asian, good looking, tall. I was like, yeah, total this studs. Has to be mine. So I was like, I attacked it, like, for a whole week. I just, oh, I was in it. And uh, I was so excited. I went to the audition. I was first, I was super early. Um, I think they were just doing it, whoever comes sure. at whatever time. Yeah. So I came at like, it was like 9.30 or something. I came at like 9 in the morning. I was They're there like, before the door even opened. Yeah, yeah right. And I was just like, I'm ready to go. I, I wore, crazy enough, I wore a suit. I wore a tie, looking like you, hey, right? Right. But I come in looking like that. Certain and, intuition. Yeah. It was is out there. It's, it was, a, it's a thing. You were on that right path. Yeah, when, you're, when you see, sometimes when you see the writing, when you see the script, when you see the scene... Yeah, sometimes it subconsciously just seeps into you and you, as you say, get on the path. Yeah. So we do the audition. And by the way, yeah, you know, speaking in Chinese, speaking in English, not trying to go up on your lines when it's two different languages and a different accent is super nerve-wracking. Yeah. And also when you're in a, the Sony mocap studio, it's like there's soundproofing everywhere and it's like a white room it's like heaven you walk in it's blinding you don't know and it's totally dead quiet so you're completely disoriented it's like a one of those isolation chambers you know and yeah just, yeah 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 and it's so it was very again super uncomfortable because it's just like what and then there's a table with all the people right. lovely people from insomniac i love them but at the time it's just like a executioner's row right yeah so it's just like, it can feel like that sometimes when you yeah, walk in the room. Right. So I had this amazing uh, scene partner, Walt Gray, the fourth. It's very important. Hey, right? hey. Yeah. That is important. And he's uh, an incredible voiceover actor and a performing arts uh, motion capture guy him- himself now at this point. But he was my scene partner. So I go in and it's me and him and we're doing the thing and I have to like really just be intense. So I have a knife, I have a rubber knife and I have Walt and we're doing this scene. And, you know, at the end of the scene, I have to slit his throat yeah. and then like push him down yeah. and then be like, anyone else, right? And it's just like super cool. So I do the whole thing, I'm feeling it, I'm in it. It's like when you play baseball and you hit the sweet spot, it's so rare that you can be in these auditions. But that was like one of the few auditions in my life where I was like, while I was doing it, even though everything was uncomfortable and weird and I was tense. You were was, there. Yeah, and I was in it, but like, yeah. For whatever reason, it was, we were in the pocket. Yeah. And so I finished doing the thing. I slice his neck, throw him down, anyone else? And then give it a beat, let it cut. They call cut. I threw my knife down on the ground. I jumped up and I said, I defy you to find someone better. And then all of a sudden I said, oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I just got a, got a little carried away. Got a little excited, you know? And then, yeah. uh, but I think... They saw the duality uh-huh. of Mr. Negative, of the really evil dude and yeah. then the really nice, gentle guy, right? So I yeah. think that was it. That was my audition. Yeah, he starts off, he's all like, oh, here's a cake for Aunt May. That's and right. oh, hi, Peter. And he's That's all right. smiles yeah. and stuff. And then he just turns and like, yeah. wow, he went, yeah. he went dark. And-, and, that, and that was really fun. That was really fun for me because up to that point, you know, I was doing some TV stuff. Yeah. Uh, and definitely with the stunt stuff, I was always like the one note, you know, angry Asian guy, or as I call it, guy, right? And like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, because. and it was, <laughs> and it just, it was always like that. So this was one where it was like, oh, this is a big acting role. 
and it was high profile, and I was able to be multifaceted and be gentle and be nice and be charming and be funny, you know. And, and still show off some skills. And then, yes, and then turn into yeah. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, and like, and like, who doesn't want to be playing a role like that? Yeah. I had the best of both worlds. So Amazing. I'm forever grateful to that role. You know, it's what I'm known for. Yeah, you dude, you, you killed it. Oh, thank you, you did. man. And of course, oh, you, 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 you rightfully get the acclaim. Thank fans you. love you as the oh, character. I appreciate the fans. There was something that had you just... The thing that I definitely took to heart was know your casting mm -hmm. and embrace your casting. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, I used to... Just truly, when I first started, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder because I was like, I don't want to be the Asian... I don't want to be the token Asian. Right. And I don't want to be the token Asian that knows martial arts, even though I love martial arts. Yeah. I don't want to just be the bad guy. But at a certain point, I was like, I'm really good at that. Yeah. And that's what people see me as. And there's a way I can flip some of these uh, conventions on their head or just bring something new or make it alive. Yeah. And so then I was, I actually started to lean real heavy into my casting, you know? And, and then put your twist on it. And then put my twist on it. Love it. And then I think that's where things started to kind of percolate. Yeah. So. Dude, I could talk to you all day, but I do want to hear some of the other things you have to say. So we're going to move on to our next segment. Mm -hmm.